has found you at last. My protege, my friend. Our calculations were correct. The ephemeral equation is unbalanced. The Earth spins on a strange and terrifying new axis. And everywhere, unbridled consequence. The world is a wasteland of failures past. And yet, you must ride out into it, unafraid. Take this. It is hope, the very last of it. It is yours now. You were bold once. Be bold once more. Free yourself from this suffocating stillness. Fix your gaze on the horizon. And face the fearsome truth of the darkest dungeon. I know failure well. I glimpsed it lurking at the ragged edges of your mind. I watched its venom spread through the veins of the world. And I trembled at its terrible reverberations. I remember our first meeting on the steps of the university. A collegial handshake. That would doom us both. Your insightful questions during my lectures gave me pause. And I recognized in you something of a kindred spirit. Despite our differences in age and position, we shared a keen fascination for archaeology, folklore, and, of course, occultism. Interminable faculty socials became something of a delight, knowing we'd abscond to a quiet table and lose ourselves in riveting discussion and passionate debate. Commonalities between the mythos of ancient cultures was not a new area of study for either of us, but it was there that we first noticed the pattern. We spent long nights immersed in crumbling, worm-eaten volumes, plumbing the forbidden secrets of antiquity. Between semesters, we would spend our days rambling the woods, talking excitedly of esoteric theory and ancient mysteries. The university's resources were impressive and yet on occasion, we relished in first-hand experience. You were my brightest student, my research partner, and my dearest friend. The mind must be freed of its self-imposed incarceration. At last, the world's mind is free to remember a time before the cancerous corruption. It was you who found the cipher, scribbled hastily in the decaying margins of some long-forgotten tome, scribbled in blood. Whether by providence or happenstance, we stumbled upon the mark of some strange power invoked the world over, reflected in cultures predating mankind itself. A semicircle radiating five points of power, a symbol hidden deep in the iconography of every ancient empire. The Iron Crown, enigmatic, and ubiquitous.
Your vociferous calls to bring our findings before the faculty were dangerously premature. Given the gaps in our understanding, doing so would risk ridicule, or worse, robbery. I took no pleasure in asserting my seniority, stifling your protestations with a strict mandate of absolute secrecy. You acquiesced, but your plaintive susurrations betrayed a burgeoning resentment. We had managed to grasp a thread of connective worship that stretched across vast gulfs of time and tribe, but we did not understand it. We required the highest standard of empirical evidence, lest my career and your future be compromised by the cynicism of our peers. Time and time again, I impressed upon you that any adulation afforded us would be fleeting if we could not properly defend our findings. I understood your eagerness to build a reputation, and it pained me greatly to hold you back. You mistook my abundance of caution for a lack of confidence, and would perseverate on your grievances at length. The subsequent months were measured in melted candles and mounting disappointments. The seething sigh, stertorous avatar of ill-concealed rage, Your fault was not in burying your furies, but in thinking they would accept such a fate. The blaze began in the east wing of the great library. Within hours, the entirety of our effort lay in a smoldering ashen heap. I braced against your rancorous buffeting, avowing a certain hesitant relief at our freedom from that mocking sigil. The uncanny arrival of the latter, however, heralded a new, pernicious phase of our investigation. We set out immediately into the kaleidoscopic wilds of the countryside and by sundown reached the remote manor whose whereabouts formed the sole contents of that cryptic invitation. At the behest of our charismatic host, we feasted beneath the banner of the Iron Crown, questioned exhaustively by an eager cabal of masked delegates. Our host assured us of the group's anthropological values, but I sensed his designs extended well beyond the theoretical. The house was scattered with ancient rarities and time-worn artifacts, all bearing that damnable emblem that had come to dominate our thoughts. Eyes wild beneath their masks, the assembled devotees shared their terrible theories of timeless, extra-dimensional intelligences, of forces beyond human comprehension. As the night wore on, circles were drawn carefully in chalk, and salt was laid upon the floor. This was not research, it was ritual and I could not stifle my repulsion. They lit black candles and chanted rhythmically in the guttural tongues of long-forgotten tribes. Even now, I can hear the echoes of those awful invocations. At my insistence, we retired to our room, 
where I countered your excitement by clearly outlining the vulnerability of our position. Reason prevailed, and we elected to block the door with a large dresser. Obsessions on shrinking gaze. Focus to a fault. Blinded you to your blessings and smothered you in a fever dream of dissatisfaction. We awoke to an empty house. The garroted bodies of the attendees lay around the basement dais, each prostrate along a point of the crown, our host conspicuously absent. I could scarcely countenance such obscenity. But you were transfixed, eyes ablaze with inspiration. The failed ritual would become your obsession. From that pivotal moment, you were blind to all else. Refusing enrollment in the fall, you took up in that moldering brownstone where I joined you in a vain attempt to assuage your aspirations. Now, free from academic oversight and moral restraint, you vowed to reach into the blackest depths of the occult sciences and be the first to grasp the secret of the Iron Crown. The polarity between us reversed. I became your reluctant assistant in dozens of deplorable experiments, crushed in the grip of your ambition. You calibrated prisms along the points of the crown, cackling in smug satisfaction as wavelengths of hideous and indescribable light burned our eyes. You attempted to map the geometric proportions of the crown to frequencies of sound, and in the resulting silence, our ears welled with blood. At night, I could hear you shuffling about the house, muttering with diabolic intent. The walls of the place closed tight about us, and it seemed at times that the outside world was a dream we could scarcely remember. Desperate to somehow help you regain yourself, I prepared a breakfast and an urgent appeal. My words fell on deaf ears, the food flung to the floor. Your appetites demanded more than I could hope to provide. The crown was a hateful and ravenous thing. It had consumed our careers, our lives, and our friendship. And still, it hungered. Ambitions reach forever exceeds its terrible grasp. <laughs> Ambition drove you to abandon everything you had. For everything you wanted. Unable to suffer your unprincipled overreach any longer, I made ready to depart, imploring you to rejoin me in more wholesome pursuits. Instead, you babbled of impossible measurements, ushering me down into the bolted cellar. In the dim light, I recoiled at the preparations you had made. Four bodies laid out along the lateral points of the crown. As the dagger's blade revealed itself through my chest, I understood. I was to be the fifth.
precise arrangement. The sacrifice of conscience. The abandonment of self. The Iron Crown had found its king. Upon your furrowed brow, the mathematics of our existence, the geometry of the cosmos, an ephemeral equation wholly expressed in negative space. To invoke its power was to refactor the most fundamental underpinnings of our gradual dimension, to imprint one's mind upon reality itself. The wind blew sour. The oceans roiled. The earth shuddered at the coming change. What world could be born of a mind so sharpened by appetence? Mankind became a mockery. His newly horrid outlines, a twisted tribute to the shape of your flaws. Newborn horrors, spawn of the crown, imprinted with your insatiable, reaching hunger. Our world convulses, stretched and torn by the emptiness that surrounds it. This existential dissolution is born of you, and only you can do what must be done to stop it. Here, at the nexus of ruin, Loathing poured forth from the darkest recesses of your mind. Your failures took form, and the world bowed in honor of your great wretchedness. The stain of your bankruptcy frayed the very fabric of our dimension. But you were afraid to face what you had wrought, and fled down the long road of your memories, hiding yourself away. I remember our first meeting on the steps of the university. You were golden, lit from within by the glow of potential. Finally, my friend, I would see that potential realized. It is time to reclaim the world from your weakness. Meet your derelictions with blazing defiance. The equation must be balanced. great achievement, the sum total of your failings, your body of work. The carious gut of the coward, ripe with toxic pusillanimity. Its infernal gaze pierces the veil of reality. Behold the hateful god upon his throne. Your failures made flesh. Torment has no place in the compassionate mind. It must be purged.
emancipation is at hand. Unmake this illusion. Destroy this half-remembered specter. destroy yourself, but the world will spring anew from the memory you kept of it. Your confession is complete. The cosmic axes are aligned once more. Forgive yourself. Humanity is a weak hypothesis, after all. An unbalanced equation. An imperfect angle. We sow the seeds of our ruin and seek to deny its reckoning. We make mountains of our mistakes. Monsters of our misdeeds. We slip and stumble. We fail and we falter. And yet, in each of us, a hopeful light. Holding fast against the hellish shadows that gather between our good intentions. And in each of us, a limitless emptiness. Of a darkest dungeon. Remain here if you wish. There is always more that can be learned.